Okay, let's talk force platform technology. Uh, in this lab, we've got two Kistler force platforms. And those force platforms can move around anywhere in those six spots. Okay, each one of these is a false platform and they come up we do i thought we did have bolts to hold them down um and here we've got a foundation and in this foundation is some junk that should not be there uh, but here's the foundation and these metal rails are really important to uh this uh, force platform this foundation i we, we actually had to dig the hole out. Well, we, someone came in with a backhoe and dug it out and then put the cement in and then uh, laid in these metal rails so they're level and they're even with each other. That actually cost quite a bit of money to get this um, built this way because it's so important that this platform, either one of these, is on a solid foundation. If the foundation moves, then this force platform is going to move and you're not measuring truly the ground reaction force. You're actually measuring the flex in the floor. So if you are putting a force platform on a second floor of a building, you can actually run into some problems because that floor will vibrate. So ideally, your biomechanics lab or wherever there is a force platform, you're on ground floor and you put in a big chunk of cement and these metal rails. So this is on a very stable, solid surface. So each corner here uh, of this force platform and this one as well, the force transducers are inside here. I'll see if I can find the pin quickly to pull that out. But these just, uh, you screw the pin in and um, open that up. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, typically, we should keep it in this drawer here. That's not it. But it looks just like that, where it's like a little hook. And, oh, there it is right there. Okay. Let's hope that's it. So now what I'm gonna do is drop this down in here and Screw that in. And this should just pull up with a little bit of force because this is just a dust cover. I'll screw it all the way down. And it's moving, but it's not quite there. Let me grab a, another tool here. Grab an Allen key. And let's see if we can pull that up. There we go. It's got a seal on it because this is a dust cover. Okay, so uh, good to keep this nice and tight. And we probably need to clean that out, but it's not too bad. Right, but we want to prevent dust from getting in there. This is the force transducer. All right. Now, it's sensitive in three dimensions, so I'm not actually going to pull it out. But there's one corner, two corners, three, four sensors, just like that. And uh, they are read in via the software, very similar to how the Pascal uh, sensors are, are uh, read in. All right. Put that back in. And that should be nice and flush in there. That's not going to... I can actually pull this out and then press it down in there. Now, these two force platforms were purchased at different times. This, this is the newer one. This one... Uh, is over 20 years old 
So I haven't looked inside here in a while, so I forget if that transducer, if they changed how it's designed. It's still stuck. And here it comes. Yep. Same design. These are pretty reliable force transducer. These are piezoelectric, meaning that they um, will change the amount of voltage depending on how hard you push on them. Now, I'm not pushing um, uh, so much right here on this center. I can push anywhere on this plate because this plate is firmly attached to the center. This, is, this plate is very stiff and won't uh, flex at all. And that's why these corners will measure very accurately. Now the Pasco Force Platform, it's got a little bit more flex in it. And if you have flex in it, then you're not truly measuring the ground reaction force. You're measuring some spring elasticity behavior of the surface. So these being very rigid is very important. All right. So, now, each of these force platforms will have a cable running out and running over to the computer. When you mount these, you've got to mount these so these cables are not pinched at all. We have had problems and we have um, broken some cables in the past because we weren't as careful with placement of these cables. And they're not, it they looks like they're all running on this side right here. Okay, these are this is the far force platform here, and these two are the, um, for this force platform here. So the signal will be sent via these cables. Oh, and uh, a couple things on this they have to be level, no rocking at all. If there is rocking, you need to shim these up so that um, each corner is flush with this piece. There are little metal shims that we have used uh, in the past to make sure that they're set correctly. So if you have to move this, you've got to, um, oh, I should have done that. You've got to unbolt the, um, the force platform from the, from the frame right now. Where did I just put my tool? You're probably seeing it on the camera. I don't see it all of a sudden. Put that out in there. So lost something in the box. So I'm looking for the tool that I just plug into here. And All right, so to take out the force platforms, just check my pockets. Did I put it in my pocket? No. I'll have to go back and look at the video and see where I put it. Uh, you're probably all 
screaming, oh, you know where it is, but uh, I just put it somewhere and I'm not sure where. I hope that's not it in here. Otherwise, I'll be having to fit that out. That's a little pain in the It's like that marble. So, uh, I'll, I'll get that out if that is what it is. Take off the top, and then there's uh, an Allen bolt down inside here. You have to take all four of those out, and then you can move this platform, either one of them, to any of these uh, configurations. Each force platform costs about $20,000, so you're not, not cheap. All right, so now if I follow this over, here's my cables coming out. Okay, my cables coming out, and they are going in here, up through here, up to this amplifier for one of the force platforms. This is the dark gray amplifier. And then this is the light gray amplifier. So what we, because we have two main data acquisition systems in this lab, we have these able to run either towards Vicon. This is the junction box for Vicon. This is the junction box for Kistler, or excuse me, for, yeah, for the Kistler computer or Bioware. So if we're gonna use Bioware, we use this junction box and the force platforms come routed through here. This is not the ADD board. This goes to the ADD board. And that will go down here and ultimately down in here. This is the ADD board, this card right here. Analog to digital. And all the analog to digital board does is it takes an analog signal, like a ground reaction force. Ground analog signal is anything, any continuous time function. So if you're watching an analog clock, you can see the second hand moving along and the minute hand moving along. In essence, pushing on the ground, that's an analog signal. It's a real time continuous signal. The digital signal is a discrete signal. That is, the A to D board samples the analog signal in such a way to reproduce it on the computer. But it's a discrete signal at that point. It's a digital signal. The data points are separated by whatever the sample rate that we set, one one thousandth of a second or what have you. Um, and, uh, and then we try to make sure that that sample rate is high enough so that we're accurately capturing the, enough information about the analog signal. That's the whole trick with A to D boards and uh, sample rate is uh, making sure that the A to B, D board is capable of representing the analog signal and its sample rate is high enough to capture the right information. So you should know the sampling theorem and you have to sample at twice the highest frequency that you want to be able to detect. So that is, uh, so you have to know what the highest frequency is and then set your sample rate off of that. And that tells you all the information you can, um, uh, that you'll collect. If you sample at greater than the highest frequency, you can actually collect all the frequency content of the signal. The time domain signal actually will not look like the analog signal. For our time domain signal to look like the analog signal, we actually have to sample often at maybe five or 10 times the highest frequency we want to detect. And the time domain signal will look like the analog signal. But we've, we've oversampled in essence. If we're trying to be as efficient as possible, we just need to collect all the, the, the just twice as high, greater than twice as high as the uh, signal, the frequency that we want to be able to detect. All right, so here's another force platform. Looks like we're, we've got this one ready to go somewhere. And same concept, um, has the four corners, four, uh, force transducer in here. And now I guess still gotta find that tool. And um, that looks a lot like our original force platform. I think this one is just as old and we were able to pick this up from another company that was, um, was getting rid of it. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, so two different amplifiers, amplifier, amplifier, but they're doing the same thing. They're amplifying the signal to be able to send to the A to D board. This is sending data to the Vicon junction box. And then this goes to the A to D board in the Vicon computer. This is another junction box over here. This is from the Naraxon system. If you remember the story I told, this is the switch that rectifies or, or keeps the data as raw. And so a um, little warning if you use that, know that that switch has to be flipped one way uh, or the other. Okay, so uh, amplifier, junction box, A to D board down there. We do not call this the A to D board. Uh, that's often what I hear people say, and that is incorrect. Amplifier, this can also go to this junction box so we can record two force platform uh, sets of data in our A to D board. Or this uh, force platform goes to the Vicon junction box and then off to the A to D board over there as well. All right, so that's the anatomy of uh, a force platform. And now I am going to find that missing piece. All right, thanks.